Okay, well, look, Jonathan, thanks very much. Just one more oh, question, sorry, finally, okay. Jonathan. Um, I'm, I'm sure the PCA will be tapping into your experiences because it does, you know, I think it's going to become more and more common that the players will struggle when they're on tour. And I, you'd like to think the, the, the Players Association would, would tap into your experiences and work with players that are suffering in the same way somewhere down the line. Well, yeah, I think it's important that, you, you know, each player has different things that they go through. And I think you've got to be able to be flexible with regards to, you know, catering for everybody's individual needs, I suppose. You know, I don't think one or every case is going to be the same as each other. So, uh, you know, I think the PCA, as time goes on, you know, people's awareness will become better and, and everything. But, you know, to be fair, I think the PCA did a really good job as it is. And, mm. um, you know, have been very, very helpful. And they've, they've helped a lot of players, not just me, who, you know, when it's happened at an international level, but at domestic level as well. You know, players have, have, have gone through your own personal... Um, you know, ups and downs, and, you know, I've always been there. Good to talk to you, Jonathan. Thanks very much. Cool. Thanks very much. That's Jonathan Trott there over at uh, a Warmly Cricket Club with Chance to Shine and Yorkshire Tea, uh, working with some of the kids. Really? Wish him well. He sounds, like, he sounds a lot happier, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah. and uh, that's coming across in his commentary book, mm. which is really, really good. Uh, my, uh, I've had a text published in the start today, but I'm not sure I can... I'm it's a bit racy, is it? It's a bit racy. <clears> I'm surprised <throat> they even published it. Brute force manner, really. Um... But, you know, equally effective, and there's a lot of people who, who are, you know, very serious horse race experts who think Geraghty is, is the equal of Mackay. That's interesting, because Richard Johnson was the one that always finished second to him, so was he tied up with somebody else? Yeah, Richard Johnson <coughs> basically writes for um, <coughs> Philip Hobbs, and the, and the thing with this job, Andy, is that it requires basically a lot of travelling. Um, Geraghty in his current or his former role now with Nicky Henderson would, would he lives in Ireland where he's raised his family and he would be over half the week in England riding Nicky Henderson courses and half in the early part of the week in Ireland. Now the the, the balance is <coughs> gonna change slightly. He'll be predominantly based in Ireland riding um McManus's horses over there and obviously they're dispersed through all sorts of different stables and then for the big meetings of the weekend he'll be over to ride um, mostly for the big races in England and then in Ireland where they have their big jump races on Sunday, he'll be back for that. So it suits him at his time of life with a young family to spend slightly more time in Ireland. Richard Johnson is, 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 is all UK based and so it's a slightly different dynamic. And the good news, by the way, for those of us who, you know, who are really rooting for Johnson this year, um, to fill the void after McCoy, that he set up fantastically well in the 2015-2016 <clears throat> championship race. So fingers crossed next April, there would be a very, what would be a very emotional and, and well-received first jockey's championship after, I think, 18 runners-up spots for Richard Johnson. I'm sure when he goes over to Ireland, he has a wander around <clears throat> Jacob <throat> Manis' stable. He's like a kid in a cake shop. You've, you've in the post today, you've, you put the tent to relish, McManus's tent to relish, and there's names like Jeski in there and shut the front door. Some some great horses. Absolutely. He really does have some uh, some big names there. And, and one that he's particularly looking uh, forward to running is my tent or yours, who, who's, who's uh, actually with Nicky Henderson, so that, that partnership will be renewed there. Uh, my tent or yours, very high-class hurdler, who missed whole of last season through injury. But if he comes back, he's going to be a really, really big noise. The, the funny thing there, if you look at that panel there, Paul, is that they're, they're dispersed around so many different trainers. Um, JP McManus has, you know, more jump sources than anyone ever has. And there's simply no stable big enough for them all. And what he tends to do is he buys horses as they're coming through and looking like they're going to uh, have potential. But he keeps them with that trainer, which is really nice because a lot of smaller trainers, they develop these, you know, one or two horse of a lifetime kind of things. And, and McManus comes along, buys them, but then insists on keeping them with that trainer, which I think is really fantastic. And that's why his string is dispersed among so many people. Obviously, his main base over in, in England is John Joe O'Neill. Mm. And John Joe's got, you know, a lot of decent horses, including Shut the Front Door, who McCoy almost won this year's Grand National for the fairy tale finish. Is there an advantage then to spreading the love like that? Because he's got horses with Willie Marlins mm. and Alan King and, <coughs> and Ender Bolger and other people as well. $8 million Ferrari. Um, it's, it's, in the, it's in the traditional Ferrari Perhaps red. Tim Hemmen will buy it. On DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM, Hawksby and Jacobs on Talk Sport. Good afternoon, Hawksby and Jacobs here on Talk Sport. And in the final hour, we're talking a bit of Brentford. A club yes. that is changing quite drastically from a sort of a little back street in West London with a pub on every corner. And 
Oh, it's going to be amazing. The new ground and the whole area, it's all coming alive. It's going to be fantastic. But well, you know, uh, in the end, it's all about the football. Fleming Pedersen has joined them as the head of football philosophy. Oh, well, they have had one under Terry Herlock. No. So uh, times are different, and uh, we'll be finding out a little bit more about it. But, but you, know, you have to think some of the greatest clubs in the world, Barcelona, they haven't got a head of football philosophy. Do you know what I mean? He's a load of old nonsense, really. <laughs> it is. Okay. It's too early to I mean? tell, Andy. It's not too early to tell. It's just you're trying to reinvent the wheel. I know the bloke's very clever, and he's isn't made it just a fortune. A sort of, but, you know, for me, for me, Brian... Isn't it a slightly a flowery of, name for a director of football? No, That's I, exactly no, the I think they've is. already got one of those, haven't they? We've got a few layers there. Yes, I mean there is a there's a hierarchy. Tom Moore, we're going to chat to the uh, Brentford journalist a little bit later on. Uh, he has a lot of experience of developing and implementing a football philosophy, uh, says the co-director mm. of football, Rasmus should, Anker. They've got two directors of football. I know, they should play at Colchester's old ground, Layer Road. <laughs> they should do. Yeah. Anyway, on that bombshell, Thank you very much. look at all the transfer stories. I'm amazed I actually knew that where they play. Yeah, it's impressive. <clears throat> no, thank you very much. I mean, you, you know...